In this video, we're going to take a look at Learn Dash quizzes, which do tend to be one of the most complicated areas and uh, can be a bit confusing. So we'll take our time and we'll walk through what's possible here. So let's start off by creating a new quiz. So it's the same as how you create other objects in, in Learn Dash under the e-learning menu. So we will uh, go to one of these and we will click on Add New under quizzes. Now at the beginning it looks deceptively like the other content types we add in terms of the e-learning courses. Um, but if we scroll further down you'll see that there are a lot of settings on the page. A lot of settings. So before we start worrying about all of those things let's start off with the basics and what you really need for the quiz. It helps too if you think about a quiz in a couple as two distinct sets of pieces. So basically there's the quiz itself, which is kind of one object, and then there are all the questions that are associated with the quiz that are essentially a second piece because you add them separately and manage them separately. So we're going to talk about the quiz piece itself first. Now again, you're going to have to name it. Uh, and I'm going to call this one quiz for screencast. Really simple. Now the content here um, is really important to talk about a bit more. Uh, this is this is content, anything you put in this editor window here that would appear on every quiz page. So every question would have this content above it. For most of the sites we work with, we don't put anything here. We leave this blank um, because usually we don't need any kind of text consistently across pages. What we generally do, and kind of recommend as a best practice, is associating the quizzes with lessons and topics in the course. And by doing that, we can put them wherever we want inside a course. They can fit anywhere within the context, and we can manage the uh, organization a bit more cleanly. And then when we do that, if we do associate it with a lesson or topic, it makes it a lot easier to set context at the lesson or topic level. So what that does is if you just create a blank lesson or topic, associate a quiz with it, it's going to show a quiz table on that lesson or topic page, which we'll see in a minute. But it's important to know that there is a way to get into the quiz from the lesson or topic you associate it with, if you do it that way. You can also associate it with a course. You can leave it on its own. Um, you don't have to follow this approach. We just recommend it for ease of organization and uh, for better, better understanding by the learners. So again, if we're setting something up, so we're setting a quiz up, it's going to be part of a lesson or topic, then we'd set context at the lesson or topic page. So what we'd include on that page then, above where they can access the quiz, would be information about the quiz itself. So set expectations. Um, maybe a summary of what they've learned as part of the, the lessons that have preceded this quiz. Um, maybe it's, it's expectations around how long it's going to take to complete the quiz, um, how many questions are in the quiz, um, what score the user needs in order to uh, pass the quiz, if the quiz unlocks any kind of certificate, which quizzes and courses can do. So it helps to talk about things at a summary level. That's what we try to do before you go into a quiz. So anything that might help the learner and set appropriate context and give them instructions about what's expected and how long they have, anything like that, it's good information to include at the lesson or topic page. That way we're not, we're, we're not needing to add consistent information at the top of every quiz question page. If you want to, you can. It goes here. So if I wanted to, this is at the top of each quiz question. I can include text there, just so we can see what it looks like. Now, I'm going to scroll down here, and you can see this is the, the Learn Dash piece that's important that we set. So if you want to control how many times someone can take this quiz, you can do that here. If you want to set, if there is a certificate, then you can set a threshold for when the certificate is awarded. So this part is confusing because this is 80, this is 0 0.8, and they mean exactly the same thing. For some reason, um, this shows the percentage, and this shows just the, um, the number between 0 and 1. Although, if you never want to award a certificate, and you still want to associate a certificate with the quiz, you could make this higher than 1, which means it can never be awarded. 
it's not something you'd really do, but you can actually have numbers greater than one. So let's go back. If we have a certificate, which we don't, I'm not going to use a certificate in this example, then I don't need to worry about this field. I do need to worry about this field. So what does a user need to score to pass the quiz and be able to move on in the course? If you've restricted lesson progression and the user needs to complete the lesson or topic or course. Um, so, you know, if they need to complete the course, um, you can set it up so that they need to pass this and that's what enables the completion. So anyway, that's where that value comes from. What is important is setting up the lesson and uh, topic association or course association. So in this case, I'm just going to use the sample that I already set. So this is the sample course that I created for the screencast, the lesson, and the topic. So I'm just going to put it here so you can see what it looks like, even though it's not going to have the context setting that I mentioned can be important. So I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm just going to click on Publish Now. Um, attributes we don't have to really worry about here because presumably there's only quiz, one quiz associated with the lesson or topic. So I'm just going to publish that before I get into some of the other settings down at the bottom of the page. Now this is where it starts to get a little overwhelming. There are a lot of options here. So the best thing to do that I would recommend, you can see there, there is a template here. I can load the templates. That's, that's probably a good place to start. So if I go ahead and load the, the template, because it's, it's kind of the, the settings that we see used on most of the platforms we support, you can see what it's done here. This is what we kind of recommend. So random questions. We don't generally do random answers. And the reason for that is if there are any true-false questions or there's a possibility of that, it's kind of weird if true's at, the f true's at the top sometimes and false is at the top sometimes. And this because there is no true-false question type, it can get a little confusing. So anyway, what also helps here, uh, we would generally recommend you have st statistics on. And uh, if I wanted to scroll down here, I wanted to show you the auto start. So what this means is that there is no start button. So if you don't associate with a lesson or topic, you can have it so that you know there is text on a page that would, we showed we showed in the editor how that would uh, the text that would be included there. Um, and then there's a button to start. But if we're doing all of the context setting on the lesson or topic, we don't really need that. We don't really need a page with the start button. So we just have it automatically start. Uh, this setting is important to mention because if you are using our functionality for emailing certificates as PDF files, this has to be turned on. It doesn't work without it. So there is a dependency there. Um, so I'll scroll down some more. Like for a lot of these things too, if you're not sure what they do, always recommended to try it out, give it a try, see what happens. Um, but there are these hyperlinks for demos that do show exactly what it would look like. It's just an image. So there's a lot of things to read through, a lot of things to try out here. If you want a leaderboard, you can have that. <clears throat> Another thing that a lot of people do use is uh, graduation text. So based on how someone performs in here, you can have different text. So I could do that. Like if you score between zero and 80%, I can say, you know, please try again. Um, if, if I set the threshold here to 80, so then if it's between, you know, 80% and 100%, then I can have different text here on the results page. So if I wanted to make changes here, if I've made a lot of settings changes, then what I would do after I've made the changes is I would update that. And then just to make sure that everything is consistent across the site, I'd probably go back here and uh, add a name here and save it. So create a new template, save it over top. And that's what I do then for any quizzes I'm creating after that, I can just load the template up and uh, then I would have the settings consistently. All right, so I would just update that again. And the next step, of course, you can see how that's associated now too, how we've done the association here. All right, now scrolling back up to the top, the next thing we need to do is add some questions. But before I do that, I just want to make sure again that comments are not enabled. So I'm just going to turn on discussion really quickly and scroll down and make sure that comments are off here and update. Once you've made com or the discussion um, meta box is visible once, that will remain visible. You don't have to do that every time. But if you do leave comments enabled site-wide, then you will still need to do it for every 
uh, every different kind of page you set up for a course. So if I click, click on questions now, let's go in and we can see at this point there are no questions set up for the quiz. Now, quizzes when they're added are unique, or sorry, questions when they're added are unique to that particular quiz. So it's not as easy, like you can, you can add questions in from another quiz, but they do essentially become part of that quiz now. So it's not like there's a global question pool, they are set up for every quiz. So let's go ahead and add our first quiz question. So you can see the title is optional here, but what happens is if you leave it blank, when it shows up in the list of questions, it just shows up as a numbered question. So if you don't add any titles, it would be question one, two, three, four, five, etc., which gets very confusing when you have randomized question order. Because then when you're reviewing questions and going through them and you're thinking, oh, I need to update this question when you're doing a review, then it's difficult to identify which question you're trying to change. So what we suggest is that you use a title that matches the question, which can be long and uh, it's a good idea to trim it then if it is too long. So assuming the question is kind of short or you know, if it is longer, just use some kind of identifier that makes it easy to identify. Um, I'm just going to use, uh, please choose the correct answer. And I'm going to make that the question itself too. On most sites, we don't set different question weightings. Um, so in most cases, the questions are worth the same amount. So we just leave that at the default of one. Um, if you did need to score by category, you can choose a category there. I'm going to paste the question itself again here that I had copied to my clipboard. Um, generally recommended that you do provide feedback. So when a user gets to the results screen, and we'll show this in a minute, but when they get to the results for the quiz, uh, quiz there's an option there to view questions normally, unless you disable it in the settings on the last page. So if the questions are enabled, you're able to, or if the, the view questions is enabled, you're enabled to um, review the correct and incorrect answers as well as see feedback if you've made that available. Or if you set up the quiz so that users are progressing through and they're seeing the answers as they answer questions, then this would show as well. So you can have the same text if you want to or it can be different. So um, if I put in that's right, here's why it's correct. That's what you might use for um, correct feedback and then if you're providing uh, feedback as well um, for for incorrect answers. So I'll say good try. Uh, the or um, okay. So I'll add some more information there. And if you wanted a hint, you could add it there. And then at this point you are able to choose what the question type is. And we have examples of some of the different ones in the samples that are provided. But basically what's important to remember is single choice is what you would use for true and false as well as multiple choice where there's a single correct answer. So multiple choice sounds like what you would choose if, you're, if you've got multiple answers and there's only one correct one. This actually means multiple answer. So single choice for true, false and multiple choice what you'd think of as multiple choice, multiple choices for multiple answer. And then there are uh, other answers here. What is important is um, the essay open answer questions. Those answers show up here. Um, so those are graded separately. So if you have any, these are this allows you to collect basically open answer questions that you grade uh, as an instructor. Um, so these are treated a bit differently. And generally for a lot of sites, we don't use them, uh, or really this one, because we tend to use this with, with forms instead if we're collecting um, you know, uh, ungraded evaluation forms. We, t uh, we tend to use forms for that instead. Um, so generally we, we try to use these, these ones, um, which still gives us a lot of variety. And, and if, you're use if you're trying to set up a course that's generally automated and self-directed and doesn't require a lot of facilitator intervention, um, then you probably don't want to use these question types. Um, just because, again, these are graded after by a facilitator, so somebody has to go in and uh, manually grade those. 
All right, so let's say it is, uh, let's say this is a true false question. So I'm going to say correct is true. And I'm going to add a distractor, which is false in this case. So you can add as many of those as you want. Again, this is how you would create a, uh, what you'd think of as a multiple choice quiz question. So once that is done, I'm going to say, I'm going to save it. And at this point, we could click this and add another question. And, and yes, it is a bit tedious to add questions individually. It takes a lot of time to go through to add the fields that uh, we covered here. Let's go back to the quiz question overview. So here we can see this is the question that we just answered. So those have been added at this point. If we go back to the quiz, I'm just going to get the URL for the quiz. So let's go ahead and click on that. And that, of course, loads the quiz directly. So let's just before we go into it, let's go back to the topic that you, we can see it's associated with. So again, this is where I suggested adding some context here, adding some some kind of introduction for the quiz. And now we can see this table does appear for the uh, the quiz. So let's go ahead and click on that. And this is the question that we added. And I'm going to click on true for that because that is the correct answer. Click on finish. And this is just because it's never been uh, attempted before, so there is no average. And then this is our score here. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and let's view questions. So we can see this is the question, this is the user's answer, and the green bar here indicates that it was answered correctly. And this is the feedback that we provided. So at this point, the user, in order to continue, would click on click here to continue. So let's take a look at that. You can see this takes us back up to the lesson level. It did that because by completing the quiz and achieving a passing score, it completed the associated topic here. So now we just have to go ahead and complete the lesson. But that is essentially why it took us back up to the lesson level. So hopefully that's all clear. And that's that's essentially how quizzes work. Um, it helps to set up a couple of them. You can see too, when, when we did complete that one, um, by completing that topic, it incremented the progress. So we've got, like as part of this course, we've just got the one lesson and the one topic. So because one of those two is now completed, then the course is, complete, is considered half complete. Anyway, that's it for quizzes. Hopefully that helps you get started with your own quiz.